Today we're going to talk about, uh, the, t the title today is Are You Bouncing Your Way to Injury? Working on kind of vertical displacement, um, minimizing that, um, knowing that we're running so we have flying time, so we're going to have falling time. We can't eliminate it, but um, to minimize it can make a big difference for us. Um, and then as well, uh, we actually are going to use some, ba some bouncing in terms of our calf raises to help us both ways to help reduce injury. Decreasing our bouncing with running and adding an exercise that includes some bouncing to help uh, get rid of some of the, or preempt some of the problems that can happen um, as people are early in the transition with calves, feet, and ankles sometimes. So, um, welcome. Anybody, uh, anybody, any, any sort of uh, running, barefooting, um, adventures, discoveries? Gardening, anybody do any gardening barefooted? It's gardening time of year. Isn't that amazing? For anybody, and if you, ha if you haven't been, it's amazing, right? Um, one discovery that I had though was that, uh, is that the only things that I usually, in gardening, including mow mowing the lawn, but the only things that I, uh, I do that barefooted, what I don't do barefooted is shoveling, jamming your foot into a, into a shovel, and uh, I have some boots that I use for that. I was doing something very much like shoveling, I was trying to contain my raspberries and I had this trellis that I had to like jam into the ground like this. So I was just jamming it into the ground, jamming into the ground. I had, I had big hiking boots on, the kind of the boots that you were talking about earlier on my foot. Didn't think anything of it. Read my daughter a story before she went to bed, got up, this was maybe six or seven hours later, and my foot hurt. Like the ball of my foot, across the ball of my foot here. And I couldn't figure out, I didn't, I, like, I didn't run that day, I did some weightlifting, but I was like, didn't do jumping. I, I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, what is going on? I was kind of poking around and I'm, you know, I'm all into feet and I'm like, what, what is going on? And then my wife, she's like, you were just kicking on that thing. And, <laughs> and it was a great reminder that even though you might have a cushion or something in between your foot and the ground, it doesn't mean that force is not there. And I had an inch of, you know, thick, solid shank rubber and the whole thing in between my foot. And, and uh, sure enough, that's, that's, that's kind of what did it for me. So that was a uh, kind of a shoe discovery for me. Um, uh, and you know, just re the reminder that I should know that, but I forgot that even if you have a shoe on, you can that force can still be transferring through the ground. So, uh, running. If let's say uh, Christy and Chris are running a marathon, okay, starting a marathon. Now they're on the they're on the they're on the front lines of a marathon right now, and Christy has a beautiful running technique where she where she her head like all great runners they keep their head on a level bounces up and down like an inch and a half. And Chris right here, he's gangbusters. He's like, oh, I got super strong calves. I, my head bobs up and down about three inches, which is about average for an average, kind of an average runner, especially in a kind of heel cushion shoe, they kind of get that bounce going. So they're both running a marathon, um, but they're gonna take two roads. Christy's gonna take the low road, running this flat marathon. She's gonna stay flat. Chris is gonna have to go up a vertical mile and back down a vertical mile in order to get to the same finish line. All those additives, the, the additive jumps, he has to generate that with his legs, his heart, cardiovascularly, and then he has to absorb it. There are very few marathons that have a vertical mile up and a vertical mile down, but his does, and Christie's doesn't. And that's just, she has a little bit, but he's got a vertical mile more than she does um, for that race. So I don't know who's gonna win for sure, but I know whose body is gonna be taking more insult and impact. And uh, if I want to be running this marathon this year, and also a decade from now, I want to run the, the low road marathon versus the high road marathon. So that's what we're going to work on today, okay? Let's start with, um, with our switchy drill, because the switchy drill and how we release our foot from the ground correlates very, very well with not jumping up and down. So give yourselves a little bit of room, stay close enough that we can hear, and if you're new, we'll just kind of follow along and you can catch up on, on some videos. But our switchy drill, we have nice, lovely ballet posture upright, knees soft, about the angle that they are with running. And I want you to put your hand on your, on your belly button here. And this will give us an idea of kind of your up and down. And I want to stay still. So bring one foot up, peel it off the ground, let your foot hang. Should be next to your opposite knee, so not out front, not out back, but just kind of right up next to your opposite knee. You can hit that ankle bone against their foot, relax, and just come down slowly, and then pull the other one up slowly, good. 
and see how your head, we exchange, we switch one for the other, and our head stays level. So now what we're going to do is as soon as the toe touches the ground, you pull your other foot up. As soon as the toe touches the ground, you pull your other foot up. There's a moment of kind of a disconnect, kind of a drop and a catch. And we see kind of how quickly we can catch and show balance. Right as that toe comes down. And we're just kind of pulling the foot out from underneath the chair and we're catching it with the other leg. Let's try the opposite, okay? Let's try adding a little bit of a jump off that foot. Jump to the other foot. Maybe a three inch jump like Chris. So this is almost the same thing. Kind of hop off that foot. We're using our calves a lot more. All right, let's go back to switchy. Head on the level and just pull the foot off the ground. So if you're, if you're just starting this drill, you can actually let your foot come to the ground and then pull the other one up to keep yourself on the level. As you, as you get more used to it, you can actually, right as that toe touches the ground, you have a little bit of that disconnect where your body comes, comes off the ground. But releasing that foot from the ground versus pushing off that foot from the ground is the difference. So let's try one more time both ways. Nice upright position. We'll start with just kind of gently jumping from one foot to the other. That kind of feels good. It's like, oh, hop to hop the other one. That's kind of a hoppy, not a switchy. Okay, now we'll try a switchy. So now we're just, gonna we're just gonna pull one foot off the ground and exchange one for the other. Try to just release that foot off the ground and stay low. Good, all right. So that's kind of the idea. Um, when you're doing the switchy, you can work on that vertical displacement portion this week. A little, think about it a little bit extra. Now we're gonna do a backpack drill. We got a few backpacks here, so we're gonna do some backpack feedback. Well, the backpack drill is something that um, I kind of came across inadvertently when I had to run home. My bike was locked up and I had to run home with my stuff from work on. And, and uh, I really like the, uh, the feedback that it gives um, kind of through the shoulders in terms of that vertical bounce. Because we have a mechanism in our eyes that keeps our eyes level even when we're bouncing up and down. We don't get a sense of that. And so this gives us feedback right on here whether we're kind of bouncing up and down a whole lot. Um, so that sensory feedback up here gives you a really good idea of your vertical displacement. So what I recommend people do is they try to run what I call run beneath the straps. Um, Ray and I have developed this thing where we, where we you know, put this on and it gives you that instant feedback. And if you lower yourself down, like you're, imagine running like a half inch beneath the straps if they were at a particular height. Obviously you can't do that, gravity still exists, but that's kind of what it's going for is if you can run beneath the straps so you don't have to carry the weight. Um, so as you're doing that, you can, uh, you can keep yourself on a, on a level. And that's what, basically what it is, is, that feedback. We're trying to just get a sense of the bounce of the backpack up and down on your shoulders. Okay, so we can't actually run without bouncing up and down or moving our torso at all. This is an exaggerated sort of situation. Granted, but it's giving some feedback uh, about kind of a, uh, about that bounce. What did, what did anybody, what did anybody kind of notice? Give me somebody that somebody noticed when they were doing it. Anything. Well, it's useful to have the feedback of the bounce on the shoulder. Right. Because I was wondering, you know, how do you know I'm not standing beside myself with a level on my head watching? So you found it really useful to have that kind of sense of feedback from the outside. And, and I think that I think that's, it makes it a worthwhile drill. Even just at the beginning of your running like around the block, after you do your warm-ups, your switchies, is a really good way to kind of get you set. And then you find the balance. You're not going to be locked in, like not moving at all. You let it be free, but just keep, in, keep a, little, uh, a little bit of that going, okay? So let's do our, um, let's do our, our, uh, our calf raise 100. So it's, it's our... Uh, ankle, calf, Achilles maintenance, prob maintenance uh, solution. So we went from not bouncing with our running to using, using a little bit of bounce for a calf raise, what we call it calf raise 100. It's a quick two minute drill. It's kind of like flossing. I kind of look at it as calf, Achilles flossing, a good kind of maintenance program. It may not be all you need to do if you have a, a bridge or a crown and you go, need to go see a specialist or something like that. But flossing each day is a good idea. And this is a good place to start. Um, 
What we want to do is we want to get strength and a little bit of the natural bounce, the recoil that we get out of running um, at, at the bottom of a range. So our body gets used to going into that bottom position when we're running and kind of getting a natural bounce out of it. So calf raise 100 um, looks like this. Uh, you can even come up onto that little uh, step right there. And what you're going to do is you're going to have the balls of your feet fully on, but just barely on the ledge. Okay? Now I want you to soften your knees to kind of running stance. So you, the fence is right there, but keep them, keep them nice and bent. Because that's the angle that we have when we're running. We don't, we don't run with our legs straight. And so the muscles that, when our ankle is bent, that we want on stretch are the ones we're trying to work on here. So what you do is, um, is we're going to do 10 repetitions on each side for, for, uh, for 200 total. And we'd like to get that done in, in two minutes which puts us at a, a rhythm that's similar to when we're running. If we're running at a 180 cadence or higher, it'll be about the same amount of uh, steps or bounces per, uh, per minute, okay? So it looks like this, and the counting goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, like that, back and forth, until you get to, until you get to 10 of each, okay? We're gonna do, <laughs> hi. <laughs> we're gonna do five of each uh, as a group, I'll start by counting out loud, and then I want you guys to follow the count in your own head. Okay, so we go one, one, two, two, and then you count up to ten. That's the way that works, otherwise it gets too confusing. All right, so here we go. I'll come to the middle here. We'll do it together. We'll all start on our right foot right here, okay? So have that knee bent a little bit, and come down to the bottom, and feel that little stopping point at the bottom. Not when your leg just completely gives out, but where if you kind of just let yourself lower down, where it kind of thickens up. And that's where we want to have, kind of have our bottom position. Other foot's kind of ready to go. And where we're going to go is we're going to start going up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, three, three, and after you're done with five, we're going to stop. So, that's five. <laughs> so it, 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 it takes a little bit. Um, but um, if you start out with five, that's a great place to start. Uh, you want to be able to get that done in a minute. Check the time, and then you can kind of see whether your pace is similar to the stretch that we're going to get while we're running. And that's what we're trying to mimic is getting to that bottom position, relaxing and bouncing off that bottom in a gentle way um, to match what we're going to do with our running. Similar cadence, similar joint angles, um, and just keep that fresh. Um, getting this up to a daily drill, if you're sore tomorrow from this, wait till you're not sore, go forward. But getting this up to a daily drill where you can go running and do this and just like flossing your teeth. The first time you floss your teeth, it may be a little bit bloody, you haven't flossed in a while, you're like, I should have flossed more, you know. It doesn't mean you don't floss, but it doesn't mean you jam the floss up there even harder either. You kind of know that over time your body will become accustomed to it, okay? So this is a, this is a simple two minute kind of maintenance drill to keep this stuff going. I know, I know a few of you are already doing this, um, and, um, and, and uh, it's, it, it's, 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 worth, it's, it's worth its two minutes of time. Certainly at least as valuable as two minutes of running time. So. Is this a good warm up just the day before, or just any time? To I, I, I do it, I, do, I, I would do it uh, after your runs, like at the end of the day. And if for some reason you did something that caused you like, think, oh, I, I can't run or it doesn't feel good, then you can just shut it down rather than before your run, or just use your minimalist Monday warm-up for your warm-up, okay? Yeah, but isn't this like something that would be safer to do after you're already warm, huh? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say doing it, and doing it either after your run or at the end of the day, um, warm up a little bit and get it going. It's a nice thing to do, but it should be gentle and kind of an easy bounce thing. We're not trying to tighten anything up, we're trying to keep the calves relaxed, like we do, like we hope to do when we're running. So it's a good practice in doing, we're trying to practice exactly what we're going to be doing when we're running with all of our drills, so. <laughs> That's the idea anyways. Um, any other questions? Sweet. All right. Let's, let's get out of here. Enjoy the day.
Thanks. I love running. I love running. I love running. I love running.